very tasty. It's very tender. It's hot with that hot sauce, but it's very good. Today, we are going to make easy peasy pot roast, classic pot roast in the Instant Pot in a lot less time than you would make in the oven or the crock pot or even on the stove top. I am Miss Katie and this is Heritage Ways. This is where I share cozy homemaking with old-fashioned family values. And you can't get much more old-fashioned and family and homemaking -y me homemaking <laughs> than you can good, good food. And wholesome food, homemade food, comfort food. I am from the South. I'm from Tennessee, born and bred. And we now live in Ohio. And I live here in this heritage house with my husband and two, our two youngest children, Little Miss Homemaker and Little Music Man. Uh, <clears throat> well, we're going to make, it's just classic roast beef. And I have two English cuts. Now, that is something that I've learned about that particular cut. I had never heard of that uh, in the South. And may have been, might have been there, but I've always heard of Chuck and, and Round and all the different others, but never English cut. So I had to ask what that was when I came here. And I've been cooking for literally, whoa, for 50 years to one degree or another. Uh, <clears throat> so English cut is just basically like a uh, Chuck roast. Uh, it's a pot roast cut. And you want a um, little bit tougher cuts when you're making pot roast. You want a lot of the marbling. That's my char uh, chiming clock in the background. You want some marbling and for the fat content, the flavor. The flavor is in the fat. Now, these particular ones, you know, if you've been with us for long, you know that I don't, I, I like to get grass fed. I like to get the best I can, but we also do the best we can. And that is what I'm doing today with the, with the English roasts that are not grass fed and not even local. Uh, <clears throat> now I am, I have these two roasts and the total is going to, the total weight is three pounds. And I'm not afraid to rub this salt into the meat, but I'm also trying to keep hands clean so that I can handle different things like my pepper mill and not get the raw meat, not cross contaminate. So I bought this pepper mill at a uh, thrift store. Did a little video of what I found that week. That was a great thrifting week. But I'm just kind of rubbing this salt and pepper in with this fork. And let's talk about a few basics before we actually put the meat into the Instant Pot. <clears throat> Now, before we go any further, I just want to say <laughs> that, uh, like I said, I have been cooking for so long. And one of those um, things I've learned, and I'm going to go ahead and just salt and pepper this next one while we're talking. But one thing I've learned is that, uh, is to listen to um, other cooks. And I started at a very, very young age as a preacher's daughter in southern middle Tennessee, um, just listening and, and with quiet respect, just sitting and listening to the, the cooks, the elder people, the elders, and I mean the older ladies and gentlemen, but we're talking about ladies. Southern, Southern church is what I grew up in, and um, our family um, had to drive thir an hour from Nashville, Tennessee, down to Mooresville, Tennessee, every Sunday, and um, this was in the 70s, 80s, well, yeah, 70s and 80s, and and we were fed. We, we stayed down there until the evening services every Sunday, and instead of driving back to Nashville, because gas was expensive, I mean, you know, it was uh, it was probably 50 cents a gallon. 
It may have been 70 cents a gallon, my word. So daddy couldn't afford that, you know, couldn't afford to drive back and forth. And so different folks would, um, would feed the preacher's family. There was a sign-up sheet uh, in the vestibule or the foyer, whatever you want to call it, and uh, who would pre feed the preacher's family today or, you know, each week. So I grew up oh, loving those country folks, loving, I have such a high respect for the, for all those families, the Stacys and Watsons and Hobbies and, and all those folks down in there, all the branches of those different families and so forth. Well, one of those ladies always used to say, never salt your meat or your beans because it would make it tough. Well, one thing, if I've learned one thing at all, it is that each person <laughs> does things her own way. And I want to, to talk about that when I'm talking about the temperature um, of putting this, uh, when we're taking, when we're cooking this meat in the Instant Pot, I want to talk about the, not the temperature, but the length of time. And, um, but for now, for now, what we've done is we are going to let, this is something I actually learned from another friend of mine who used to be a butcher, working a butcher's in the butcher uh, part of a very small store. So he was a butcher in the back of the, of the country grocery store. But he would always say to let the meat come to room temperature. And that is what we're doing. So I'm going to let this, now that I've salted and peppered it, you know, if you want to put garlic powder, or onion powder or something, that's fine. But I'm going to let this just sit here till it comes up to, you know, about room temperature. You don't want it cold out of the refrigerator. Um, so I'm going to let this sit here another probably 45 minutes, something like that. Maybe an hour. It don't, it don't hurt my feelings if it sits here for two hours. All right. It's time to get these things put into the Instant Pot. <clears throat> here we have our two roasts totaling uh, three pounds. Before I forget, I'd like to say, and I was thinking of this a while ago when I was talking to y'all. But on the topic of different cooks doing things different ways, it is my true desire and passion to teach y'all or to encourage y'all. I know you know how to t cook, most of you probably. Uh, most of you are not new cooks. But to encourage y'all, if you don't already, to cook without recipes. So I like to teach um, more of methods than actual recipes. If you need actual recipes with measurements, uh, I have written two cookbooks so far. They have ex exact measurements and so forth. So you can find information on those cookbooks down below in the description box of this video and on our website, heritageways.com. But I want to teach you in this particular, even though it's an Instant Pot and that can be scary to some people, I want to teach you um, the method of how to do this, not necessarily the time, and I'll explain that here in a minute. All right, in this, I put just a little bit of um, olive oil, or no, avocado oil, excuse me, a little bit of avocado oil, and I'm going to have this Irish butter, and I'm gonna put just a little bit of that in there. I leave this set out all the time, like our ancestors did. All right, so I've turned this on saute. So I'm gonna bring you in a little bit closer and let you see what I'm doing. This is an Instant Pot, not uh, sponsored or, or anything like that, but it is Instant Pot brand. It is six quart saute, and then a little bit, we're gonna use that pressure. We're gonna want it on high pressure. And we're gonna talk about the time. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sear this meat. Now, you don't have to do this, it's not the end of the world, but we are trying to make a good old-fashioned pot roast. And this is a very important step. Right now we've got that butter melted. Now, butter solids do burn easily, so just know that, be aware of that. You don't have to add the butter. Remember, I'm teaching you methods. You don't have to add the butter. You can add a couple tablespoons of coconut oil. You do need to have something because it's going to stick if you don't. All right. Just putting this in here to sear. I'm going to put it in here. Don't 
touch it. It is kind of small. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut it each one in half because when you do this in your cast iron, it fits. But it's not fitting in here. So let me half these real quick. I'm just going to put this in here and not touch it. Two, three or so minutes. I'm letting it get brown. I'm not moving it around. That's called searing. This is just getting it brown and it's sealing in the juices. Now while that's doing its thing, and since I cut it, I might can fit two in there next time. I will tell you, see, Okay, now see that? Let's do it again. I'm just gonna make sure that the bottom's not even, so I'm gonna, or flat. Okay, there, and then I'm gonna put this other one beside it. Don't move it. Uh, <clears throat> last summer, I did a uh, cooking show, is what I called it, but it was 54 consecutive cooking videos to celebrate my 54th birthday. And uh, I had a different theme each week. In that window because I don't have a vent in my kitchen. Uh, I have a different, I had a different theme each week and one week was Southern foods, I think, or comfort foods or something. And I did a classic pot roast in the oven. And of course we ate the supper that night and Mr. Patient said, Katie, this is the best pot roast ever, like you've ever made. And it was good, y'all, it was good. So I will link that recipe or video in the comments above. And then my sweet friend, Miss Debbie, all last summer, I didn't ask her to do this, but she did it. It helped me so much because that is, it's busy enough. It's hard enough to make two videos a week, honestly. But every day, it took my whole summer. It just, anyway, she wrote the recipe in the comment section of each video. Uh, so I pinned that to the top. So that's what you want. You do, it's going to sizzle. It's going to smoke. That's okay. Now, if you may ask, do you turn it around and do all the fat sides? No, I do the top and the bottom. The top and the underside. That's it. You might call this a secret because probably a lot of people don't know to do it and a lot of people don't do it. Now, another thing I'll tell you about searing is... Um, It lo I said it locks the juices in, but also you'll know that it is seared completely or well when it picks up easily and doesn't stick to your pan. So just don't move it, don't touch it, don't try to flip it, don't do any of that. I just kind of know by just knowing, by doing, and I know this one's ready to turn over. See, it came up just fine. See how it, I don't know if you can see that, but... With the lighting the way it is and the way it is. So I'm going to continue to do this until they're all four pieces are seared. Now, at this point, if you want to, wash um, uh, some celery and some carrots and uh, maybe onion, potatoes, you know, that's, that's classic. But also, you can serve this with roasted potatoes, mashed potatoes, rice, noodles. <laughs> um, Shred it on sandwiches. You could put it in a loaded uh, as a loaded baked potato. Cold the next day on some sandwiches with a tomato. Wouldn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound good? This is my homemade uh, French onion uh, soup mix or dip mix, whatever you want to call it. It is in my recipe in my cookbook, but it's also here on YouTube, so you don't need to buy the cookbook to know how to do this or make this. It's so important to make your own spices and seasoning mixes. I've been doing that for years. I just love it. I'm so excited that people are finally jumping on the bandwagon. <laughs> but one important thing is the powder is going to settle to the bottom on this. So you want to shake it. And then not only that, but when I go to get my amount out of there, I use a spoon and I kind of stir it and try to get uh, a good distribution. Because it's got the dried onions in it and then the powder and so forth. I'm gonna put, I've got this eight a cup measuring spoon, which I love these things. Um, and I'm probably gonna put, 
either one of these or two, which two would be a fourth a cup. And that's the only seasoning I'm going to use. Um, you can look it up on the internet or whatever, and you can find everybody's got different methods and seasonings and herbs, and that's fine. I may get in here and pull out some of my Italian seasoning uh, blend. I may do that, and I may not. It's all about the method, whatever you want in there. And we've got some fun down in there. Fond is the word. And then you're going to, we're going to deglaze it, get that, that cooking, the stuff that cooked on, that's fond. You see here, you've just got your seared meat. It's not ready to eat, unless you're one of those people that likes it super rare, and I'm not. I think that's gross. All right. Hope you don't mind the fan noise in the background, but we had to do that. Okay, <clears throat> now I am going to um, add, get ready, it's going to steam in your face there. This is optional. I'm going to add about a tablespoon of red wine, whatever kind of red wine. Can't pronounce that. But anyway, tablespoon of red wine. We're going to deglaze. And deglaze means to, like I said, get that front off the bottom. I'm going to use this little wooden thing. And then it's going to sizzle and I won't be able to talk, but I want to tell you that I'm also going to add beef broth. Now this is some watered down beef broth. <laughs> it's, it was about, because you're going to need a, at least a cup of liquid. Okay, now, see now there's no stuck on bits. All that flavor isn't going to be in the sauce or the gravy or the whatever you want to call it. Okay, now, so you want about a cup of, or at least a cup of liquid. It can be broth, it can be water. I wouldn't put a cup of wine. That's just for flavoring, and it does add a good flavor. If you don't want wine, don't drink wine, don't have wine, fine. That's fine, that's fine. You can add instead, or in addition to, a couple of teaspoons or a good glunk, a splash of, people make fun when I say this, because we have a lot of followers in Europe. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm sorry, and then I'm going to say Worcestershire sauce, because I'm from the South, and we don't pronounce anything right anyway. Liquid aminos is a good option, too. It's good and healthy. I only have this because I, there was something that I didn't want to use this for. But anyway, I'm still going to add a glug of this. There, good glug. And then, so now, see, there's nothing, you can't see maybe, but there's nothing burned on the bottom now. It's all smooth because we have deglazed it. This is where it gets classic. I'm going to put two. So that gives, that's a fourth of, tea, fourth of cup. If you're writing this down. Now, in my cookbook, I also have a Greek seasoning, which would be great in this. I used that last time I made this. Uh, you could use taco seasoning if you want to do that. I've got a recipe for that here on YouTube. One time I used four cups of broth because I read a recipe that said that. And I basically had soup. Eh, I don't really want soup. But you can't use no liquid because it's got to have the liquid to get up to pressure and to cook. <clears throat> Uh, I was gonna, that's what I was gonna say about, I have, about different cooks and stuff like that. I have, um, looked on the, on, spent a lot of time looking at websites and recipes for this, uh, through the past month, weeks and months and so forth. And I saw every variation in the world. <laughs> I saw, you know, I saw where it said to, um, to cook for two minutes. And same amount of meat, you're crooked up there, to cook for two minutes or an hour and a half. Same amount of meat, same pressure, same everything. And it said to re let it release naturally for 20 and all this. And then I read something that said cook the same amount of meat for an hour and a half and let it release naturally for 10. Okay, this is where you figure out what works, you do it. If it works, write it down and that's what you do from now on. But all those, all those different ways of doing things really taught me or reinforced that there's not just one way to cook this roast. Okay, so I'm turning this to off, to cancel. I've got the lid on, put it on there. 
turn it, turn it to ceiling. Then come over here to pressure level. Well, where am I? No, pressure cook rather. And I'm gonna put it on 60 minutes. Like I said, I read somewhere it said recommended uh, for the three pounds, two minutes, but no. 60 minutes is what works. You could probably get by with 45. And if if my way of doing things is bothersome, um, I, I, I do hate that if you really, really like, you know, recipes and exact measurements. Um, but I do want you to get to where you can cook with what you have, use what you've got, and, and just know intuitively how, what to do with those things. And then you hit pressure cook, and I put it on for 60 minutes, and it said an hour, and now it's on. So now it's gonna take a while to get up to pressure. <clears throat> Some steam may come out the top or the sides or the little vent right there. It may come out, that's okay, just leave it alone. Don't be scared of it. Okay, this, uh, the tie, the hour finished, and after it finishes, it does a series of beeps. I don't know why it does the flickering, because it's not doing that in real life. Um, I'm sure that's some kind of a technology thing that I don't know about. Okay, so this did a series of beeps just to let the cook know that it was done. But this, I don't really actually know what the L means. I could research it and find out. But um, this is the um, pressure reduction. This is the natural process pressure reduction so this means it has been three minutes since it was done and what we want to do is we want it to be 20 minutes or 10 to 20 minutes we'll just we can call it 10 i got some some of my homemade hot sauce out to serve with this roast because we really like um hot sauce and i made for the first time this homemade hot sauce um from my peppers last summer actually last fall it's a fermented hot sauce as well, so it's actually healthy for you. <laughs> All right, here we are. And I'm just gonna take this towel. And I'm gonna take this vent mechanism and turn it to venting. Put a towel over it. My friend Laurie taught me that trick when we were at her house making instant pot vegetable stew. All right, that took roughly a minute, maybe a minute and a half hot. You can make gravy out of that wonderful au jus hot roast. Now, like I said, you can add your vegetables. You can have your vegetables look as just tender as can be. And honestly, I've added other herbs and, and spices and things like I'd already mentioned. I do urge you to just check out that other video that I talked about because um, the one that I said, Mr. Patient said, that's the best one I've ever made. The best roast I've ever made. I usually put a couple bay leaves in, but I didn't this time. I was trying to keep it simple for those of you that were interested in just a simple, basic, delicious classic pot roast. Here it is. All right, I'm gonna put hot sauce on this, a little bit of the homemade hot sauce. I just used a recycled bottle for this. Also like horseradish sauce, homemade. It's very tasty. It's very tender. It's hot with the hot sauce, but it's very good. Super tender. I will write the recipe on my website so that you'll have a recipe to go by while you're learning how to just cook without a recipe intuitively. If you enjoyed this video, you thought it was helpful for you, Hope you'll try one of these two videos and learn more about cozy homemaking with old-fashioned family values. Make sure you're subscribed to our channel and you've hit the little bell to receive notifications 
so that you'll know when I upload another video. Have a good night and don't forget to count your blessings.